Knowest thou this country? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysia. Perchance he is not drowned. It is perchance that you yourself were rescued. Oh, my poor brother, and so perchance may he be. True, madam, and to comfort you with chance, assure yourself after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, who was provident in peril, find himself, courage and hope both teaching him the practice, to a great mass that lived upon the sea, were like Orion on the dolphin's back. I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves, so long as I could see him. For saying so, there's gold. Mine own escape unfolded to my hope, where to thy speech serves for authority the like of him. Knowest thou this country? I will, madam, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature and in name. What is the name? Orsino. Orsino. I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And is so now, or was so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence, and then t'was fresh and murmur, as you know, what great ones do the less will prattle of, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? Virtuous maid, the daughter of a count, who died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, for whose due love, they say, she hath abjured the company and the sight of men. There is a fair behavior in the captain. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. It will be very worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may hap to time I will commit, only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let my eyes not see. I thank thee, leave me on. my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I'm sure care is an enemy to life. By my trust, Mr. Cody, you must come in earlier than night. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. Quite let her accept before accepting. I but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine or confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots too. And be they not let them hang themselves in their own straps. Walking and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady speak of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight brought him here one night to be her wooer. Who? Andrew Eggcheek? Aye, he. <laughs> He's as tall a man as any in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? He has 3,000 ducats a year. I but held but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fine, but you say so. He plays on the, uh, the viol de Gamboys and speaks three or four languages, word for word without book. And he has all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed, almost natural. Besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler, and but that he hath the gift of a fool to lay the gust he hath in quarreling, to sell among the brood, he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, there's scoundrels and subtractors to say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your presence. I'm drinking house to my niece, and drink to her as long as there's passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward, and a cloister will not drink to my niece till his brains turn on the toe like a parish top. What wench? Cast you on a vulgo, for here comes Sir Andrew Eggface. Sir Toby Bell. Sweet Sir, Sir, Sir Andrew. Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew. A cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary Acost. You mistake, knight. A, a cost is confronter, a boarder, a wooer, a, a sailor. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And now let part so, Sir Andrew, but thou mightest never draw a sword again. Fair lady, any part so, I would I might never draw a sword again. Do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Now, sir, thought is free, I pray you. Bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Ooh, wherefore, sweetheart, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Why, I'm not such an ass, but I can't keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? I, sir, I have my fingers ends. Mary, now I let go your hand, I am barren. Oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, 
I think, unless you see Canary put me down. Sometimes methinks I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe it does harm to my wit. No question. I thought that I'd forswear it. I'll ride home tomorrow. <laughs> Sir Toby, your niece will not be seen, for if she be, it's four to one. She'll none of me. The Count himself hard by a loser. She'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear it. There's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. I'll we'll call it the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and rebels, and sometimes all together. Art thou good at these kickshaws as that? As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be under the degree of my betters, and yet I will not compare with an old man. What's thy excellence in a galliard, knight? Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the button to it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Shall we set about some rebels? <laughs> what shall we do else? Are we not born under Taurus? Taurus, that's sides and heart. No, it's legs and thoughts. Let us see the caper. Excellent! Excellent! Higher! Higher! Excellent! Excellent! If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call into question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. I thank thee. Here comes the count. Who saw Cesario? Ho! On my ten on your attendance, my lord, here. Stand thou a while aloof, Cesario. Thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Stand at her doors, be not denied access. And tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow, till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrows, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leave all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. M say I do speak with her, my lord, what then? Oh, then unfold unto her the passion of my love. Surprise her with the discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woos. She will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio of more brave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it, for they shall yet belie thy happy ears that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth than rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maid's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative of woman's heart. I know thy constellation is right out for this affair. Some four or five attend him, all if you will, for I am best when least in company. Prosper well in this. And thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet a barful strife, wherever I woo, myself would be his wife. So wise a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in the world needs fear no colors. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. Good let an answer. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away. Is that not as good as a hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. And as for turning away, let summer bear it out. You are resolute then. Not so, neither. But I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other hold, or if both break, you get some falls? Apt in good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any is in the Lyria. Peace, you rogue, no more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. Wit, and be thy will, put me into good fooling. These wits that think they have thee do very often prove fools. And I that am sure I lack thee may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinipolis? Better a witty fool than foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellow? Take away the lady. Go to, you're a dry fool. All the more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. 
Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool drink, that is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. The lady may take away the fool, and therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. This prison in the highest degree. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Make your proof. I must catechize you for it. Good my master virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and will do so till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity, that decays the wise, doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not give his word for two pence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. Who look you now? He is out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest. I take all these wise men that crow at such fools as no better than the fool's zanies. <laughs> you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and of free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts, which you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a no discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. <laughs> Mercury and do thee with leasing, for thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not. Tis a fair young man, well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madman. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick, or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old, and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, who scold you pram with brains. For here he comes. One of thy kin has a most weak piamater. By mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cuz? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here. Plague of the pickled herring. Oh, now, sot. Good sir, Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have thou come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. There's one at the, there's one at the gate. Aye, Mary, what is he? Let it be the devil and I am the only will. I care not. Give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. a drunken man like fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above he makes him a fool, the second mats him, and the third drowns him. Go thou and seek the crowner, and let him sit in my cuz, for he's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Uh, madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. But he takes it upon himself to know as much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep, but he seems to have foreknowledge of this as well, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, madam? He seems to be fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so, but he says he will stand at your door like a policeman's post and meet support to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you. Will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. As a squash tis before it is a peace god, or a cooling is before it is an apple. So it is with him in standing water, between boy and man. He comes very well favored, and he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman? My lady calls. Come, give me my veil. Throw it o'er my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The Honorable 
lady of the house? Which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. What is your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me of this dear lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am comfortable even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentlewoman, give me modest assurance, if you are the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart, and yet, by the very pangs of malice, I swear, I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself, for what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will honor my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of the message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. And tis poetical. Tis more the like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one instead of skipping a dialogue. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no taxation of war, no overture of homage. I hold the olive in my hands. My words are as front of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhood. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us this place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? The answer by the method, in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, if you will leave these graces to the grave, and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventory, and every particle and utensil labeled to my will, as item, two lips in different red, item, two gray eyes with lids to them, item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Will you send hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud, but be the devil and you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such a love could be but recompense, though you crown the non peril of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Though I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in every shape and dimension of nature a gracious person, but yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, and in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love, and sing them even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post lady. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love, and let your fervor like my master's be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? 
Above my fortunes, yet my state is well, I am a gentleman. Oh, be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon, not too fast, soft, soft, unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel these youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Will you stay no longer? Normally not that I go with you. By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave, that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me know whither you're bound. No, sue, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me, from me what, what I'm willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners that rather to express myself. You must know me, then. Antonio, my name is Sebastian which I called Rodrigo. My father is that, Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you've heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. The heavens have been pleased you would have so ended, but you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, was my sister drowned. Alas, the dead. Lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, it was yet a many accounted beautiful. And though I could not with such estimable wonder were far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore in mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her bummer skin with more. Pardon me, sir. You're bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not burn me with love, let me be of servants. If you will not undo you, what you have done, that is, kill him whom you once have recovered, desire it not. Fear you all at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the marriage of my mother, that upon the least occasion more of mine as will tell tales to me. I am bound to the Carnosino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with him. I have many enemies in Duke Orsino's court. Not what I shortly see you there. But come to me to adore thee so that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Approach to be a bed up, not to be a bed after midnight, as it's be up at times, and a delucular surgery, thou knowest. Nay, yeah, I know, uh, nay, my troth, I know not, <coughs> but I know to be up late is to be up late. Thou art a scholar knight, therefore, let us eat and drink. Mary, and I say, a stoop of wine. How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now let's have a catch. Here's sixpence for me. Now let's have a song. There's a test of me too of one night cooking. Would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. A A, I care not for good life. Sit in contagion. But we shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we uh, shall we have a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? And Tell me, shall we do that? And you love me, let's do it. I'm dog out of cat. Oh, I'm a lady, sir, and 
some dogs will catch well. On the 12th day of December. What are you keeping here? If my lady had not called up her steward Malvolio, they would turn you out of doors. Never trust me. My masters, are you mad? Do you make an alehouse of my lady's house, yet squeak out your coziest catches with no mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect for places, persons, or time in you? We did keep time, sir, and our catches <laughs> stick up! <laughs> sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. <laughs> If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome at the house. If not, it would please you to take a leave of her. She is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Leaving Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. Is it even so? But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. <laughs> Thou art in the right. Therefore, sir, go, rub your chain with crumbs, marry it, I say, a stoop of wine! Mistress Mary, <laughs> if ever you favored my lady's favor as anything more than contempt, you would not give means for such uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears. Twere a good indeed is to drink when a man's a hungry, to challenge him the field, then to break promise with him. And make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge or deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Count was today with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. As for Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not go him into Nayward and make him a common recreation, do not think I would enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love wherein he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very little my lady your niece. Excellent, I smell a device. I have it in my nose too. She shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and that she is in love with him. My that color. Is your horse now will make an ass of him? Ass I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal I warrant you. I know my physic will work him. But it's night to bed, entering my leave my farewell. Good night, Pantasalea. Before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle, true bred, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. Let's to bed, knight. Thou hast need send for more money. If I don't have your niece, I'm a foul way out. You hast her not in the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it how you will. Never mind then, let's burn some sack. Come night, come night. Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Cesario, come. But that old and antique song we had last night, Methought it did relieve my passion much, more than these uh, light airs and recollected terms of these most giddy paced times. Oh, come but one verse. He is not here, so please, your lordship, that should sing it. Who was it? Festy, the jester, my lord, a fool that the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out and play the tune the while. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. Dost thou like this tune? It is the very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak. Masterly. My life upon it, boy, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your
your complexion? He is not worth thee, then. What, what years in faith? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let the woman t still take an elder than herself. So wear she to him, so sway she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our thoughts are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than woman's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let, let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come. What that song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain. The spinsters and knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones did use to chant it. It is silly, Seuss, and dallies with the innocence of love, like the old age. Are you ready, sir? I prithee sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad cypress let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain, my fair cruel maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it. Here's for thy pains. No pains, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thee for thy pleasure, then. Truly, sir, pleasure will be paid one time. Or another. Give me now leave to, uh, leave thee. Now, the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea, that their intent might be everything, and their business everywhere. For that's it that always makes a good voyage of nothing. Fare thee well. <clears throat> Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world, prizes not the quantity of dirty lands. Those parts nature hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in and tracks my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Nay, but you must say that some lady hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must you not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can buy the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No heart so big to hold so much. Last, they lack retention. Their love may be called appetite. No motion of the liver but the palate that suffers surfeit coiment and revolt. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Ay, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. My father had a daughter, loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I would your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined and thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet 
I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. Give her this jewel. Say, my love can give no place. Bid no denay. Fly away, Senior Fabian. Nay, I'll come. My was a scruple of the sport will be boiled to death with melancholy. Here comes my little villain. How now, my medal of India? Take ye all three to the box tree, for I know this letter will make him a contemplative idiot. Close to the name of Justine. Lie down there, for here comes the fruit that must be caught with tickling. Uh, Tis but fortune. All is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard my lady come thus near as to say that, should she fancy, it would be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than any of those that follow her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. Peace contemplation makes for a turkey cock of them. Oh, juts under his man's plumes. Sly, I could so beat the rogue. Oh, peace, peace. To be. Count Malvolio. Ah, oh, rogue! Pistol him, pistol him. Oh, peace, peace. There is precedent for it. The Duchess of Stratton married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Lie on him, Jezebel. Peace, that was deeply and see how imagination blows him. Having been married to her thus, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye. Officers are all about me in my branched velvet gown. So Toby approaches. Courtesy is there to me. So this fellow lamp? I extend my hand to him thus. Quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take a blow in the lips then? Saying, Sir Toby, my fortunes having cast me upon thy niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? what? You must amend your drunkenness. Oh, scab! And besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warn you. One, Sir Andrew. I knew it twas I, for many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Oh, peace, let the spirit of humor intimate reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These are her very C's, her U's, her T's, and thus she makes her great P's. It is, in contempt of question, her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's, why that? To my beloved, this and my best wishes. Her very phrases. By your leave, Wax. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know? What follows? The number's altered. Should this be thee, Malvolio? <laughs> Mary hang thee, Brock. I make man where I adore, but silence, like a Lucrece knife, with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. Fustian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but let me see, let me see. Oh, it is a poison she is dressed in. With what wing the Daniel checks in it? I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. She is my lady, I am her servant. This is evident in any formal capacity. But what should that last alphabetical portion portend? If I can only make it resemble something in myself. A soft. M-O-A-I. Oh, I make up that. He's now in a cold scent. Nay, he'll find it again. I warrant you that. M-O-A-I. This simulation is not as the former, but to crush it a little, it would bow to me. For all of these letters are in my name. Did not say you would work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. Soft. It falls prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. If my stars, I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands. Let thy blood and spirit embrace them. And, to injure thyself to what thou art like to be like, cast thy humble slow and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue in arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that signs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross-guarded. I say, remember. Go, 
Thou art made, if thou desires to be so. If not, let me see thee a servant still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy of such fortune's fingers. Farewell, she would after her altar services with thee. The fortunate unhappy. Daylight in Champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be plan to be as the very man. I do not now fool myself and let imagination jade me, for all reason indicates that my lady does love me. She did commend my stockings of late and wish to see me cross guarded. And in this, she manifests herself to my love, with the kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars, I am happy. I will be strange, stout, and yellow stockings and cross guarded, even to the point of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. Yet here is a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear, my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee, I will smile. I will do everything thou wilt have me. <laughs> Marry the wench for this device? So could I too. And ask no other dowry of her but such another jest! <laughs> Nor I neither. Here comes my noble bull catcher. <gasps> Wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Or on mine either? Shall I set my freedom at a trade trip and become my mock slave? Or I either? Thou hast put him in such a dream that when he awakes, he must run mad! David Satyr, does it work upon him? Like Aqua Vitae with the midwife. You will see the fruits of this part. Mark his first approach to my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, which is the color she abhors, and cross garden, which is the fashion she detests. And she will, he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy that she is, that it cannot but turn her into a notable contempt. You will see it. Follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. For I do live in my house, and my house doth stand by the church. And so thou mayest say the king lies by a beggar, if a beggar dwell near him, or thy music stands by thy church, if thy church stands by the music. You have said, sir, to see this age, a sentence is but a shovel of love to a good wit. How quickly the wrong sign may be turned outward. And that is true. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. And fools are as like husbands as pilchards are to Harry's. The husband's the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. Nay, and that pass upon me, how no more with thee. Oh, there's expenses for thee. Now Job, in his next commodity of hair, send me a beard. <laughs> I'm almost sick for one, though I would not have it grow upon my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these of bread, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring out Cressida to this Troilus. I understand you, sir. Twas well begged. The matter, I hope, is not great, sir, begging but a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady's within, sir. I will construe to them whence you come. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool. And to do that craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons and the time. And wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. My duty and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir. Twas never merry world since lowly fame was called compliment. 
your servant to the Count Orsino, you. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. By your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I would rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, give me leave to beseech you. To one of your receiving, enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hideth my heart. So, let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not a guise, for tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why then? Methinks it is time to smile again. O world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much better to fall before the lion than the wolf. The clock abrades me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, gentle youth. I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is alike to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho, grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You owe nothing to my lord by me? Stay, I prithee, tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right, I am not that I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid, love's night is noon. O oh, Cesario, by the roses of spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that over all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reason from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause. But rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one bosom, one heart, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress, it, mistress be of it, save I alone. And so, adieu, good madam, never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayest move that heart which now pours to like his love. No faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Valk, thy reason. You must need yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than she ever bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. But did she see thee in a while? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. There was a great argument of love in her towards you. Sally, will you make an ass of me? I'll prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of both judgment and reason. A day of the grand juryman since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exacerbate you, to awaken your dormant valor, to put fire in your heart, and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her, out some excellent jest, a fire move from me. You should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand. And this was balked. The double guilt of this opportunity, we let time wash off. You are now sailed into the north, my lady's opinion, where you hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. Unless you do redeem yourself by some laudable attempt to be their valor or policy. Hey, if it be any way, it must be with valor, for a policy I hate. I had at least be a brownist as a politician. Why? Build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the account's youth to fight with them. Hurt him in eleven places. It, my niece, shall take note of it, and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can prevail more in a man's commendation with a woman than the report of valor. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go! Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief, no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and fun of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. Thou doust him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. And as many lies as will lie in thy paper, although thy paper were big enough for the better word in England, set him down about it. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen, no matter. Go! Where shall I find you? Uh, we'll call on the other uh, cubicula. Go. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. Oh, I have a dear to him, lad. Some uh, three thousand or so. <laughs> we shall have a rare letter from him. But you'll have to deliver it. Never. Stir on the youth to an answer. For oxen and wing ribs can scarce hail them together. For if you were opened and you find in his liver enough blood that will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of his anatomy. <laughs> As opposite the youth bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. 
Look where the youngest friend of nine comes. I desire to explain you a lot for yourself in the stitches. Follow me. Yonko Malvolio is her heathen, a very renegado, for there's no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grace. Yes. He's in yellow stockings. And cross carter? There's no one is like the pedant that keeps the school and the church. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter I drop to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map of the augmentation of the Indies. You've not seen such a thing as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him, and if she do, he will smile and take it all for great favor. You lead us where he is. Oh! I would not find my way up from you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth, and not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn me to a longer travel. But jealousy, which might befall you on your voyage, being skillless in these pots, which to a stranger and guided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love by the rather sits forth in these arguments of fear in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can know their answer make, but thanks and thanks. And ever off good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay. But were my worth as is my conscience firm, you would find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics at this time? To Mars. Let's first go see our lodging. I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame of the renown of the city. I would do pardon me. I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in the sea fight against the count and its galleys. I did such service of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Do not then walk to Wolf then? It doth not fit me. Hold, sir, here's my purse. In the south suburbs of the elephant it is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet while we beguile time with the feeling your knowledge and feeding your time in the city. Why your purse? Happily, near light your eyes shall light upon some toy your desire to purchase. And your store, I think it is not for out of market, sir. I'll be your purse there and need you for an hour. To the elephant, I do remember. Civil and suits well for a servant of my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? How now? Malvolio. Sweet lady. Ho ho. Smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady? Well, I can be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross guardery. But what of that? If it pleaseth the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sign it says. Pleaseth one, it pleaseth all. How dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, but yellow in my legs. It has come into his hands, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Why appear you in this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. T'was well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. <laughs> some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross guarded. Cross guarded. Go, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Hi, this is very midsummer madness. Madam, the young gentleman of Count Rosino's has returned. I can hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Maria. be looked to? Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for a half of my dowry. Aha! Uh, who comes? No worse than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She wishes me to appear stubborn to him, as she incites me to in the letter. I have limed her. But it is Jove's doing, and Jove make me thankful. Where is he in the name of sanctity? 
If all the devils of hell be drunk a little, the legion himself possessed him. Yeah, I'll speak with him. Here he is, here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Get off. I discard you. Let me to enjoy my private. Go off. Lo, how all of the fiend speaks within him. Did I not tell you, Sir Toby? My lady prays you have a care of him. Ha, ah, does she so? Oh, go to, go to. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. What, man? What is it with you, Malvolio? How is it? Defy the devil, Malvolio. Consider, he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Lon, you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he's not bewitched. Ah, Biddy, come with me. Consider. It's not for gravity to play at the cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul collier. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of this godliness. Oh, go hang yourselves all. I am not of your element. You shall learn more hereafter. <laughs> it's impossible. It is replayed upon a stage now. I can become it as an improbable fiction. Ah. His very genius has taken the infection of the device, man. Nay, pursue now, lest the device take air and taint. Oh, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. <sighs> and all the more matter for a May morning. Here's the letter, read it. Warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Hey, it is, I warn him. But do read. Give me. <coughs> you, whosoever thou art, Thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. That thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and to exceeding good sense. I will waylay thee going home, where it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou killest me like a rogue in a villain. Still, you keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy on mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself, thine friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Eggcheek. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I will give it to him. He may have very good occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, will by and by depart. Go, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey. And when thou seest him, draw! And when thou draw, swear horrible! For it comes to pass that a terrible oath, is with a sharp accent, swaggeringly twanged off, gives one's man more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Oh, wait. Nay, let me alone for swearing. Now I will not deliver this letter. <laughs> this letter, being so excellent, ignorant, will read no terror in the youth. You will find it comes from a clog hole. But I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon egg cheek a notable report of valor, which will send the youth, as his youth will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of his rage, his skill, his fury, his impetuosity. They will kill each other by the look like cockatrices. Here he comes with your niece, give him way till they take leave, and presently after him. I shall better take the while upon some hideous message for the challenge. Away! Unto a heart of stone, and laid my honor to one carry out. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same heavier that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny, that honor saved may upon asking give? Do nothing but this, your true love for my master. How may I give to him that which I have already given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save me! And you, sir. That defense thou hast, take the oven. What nature the wrongs thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, and bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. You mistake me, sir. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel with me. My remembrance is very free and clear from any injury done to any man. You'll find it quite opposite, I am sure. Therefore, if you value your life at any price, betake you to your guard. For your opposite hath in him the rage, skill, wrath, and fury that confers your man fall. I pray you, what is he? He is a knight, dubbed with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration, but he is a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies yet divorce three. 
and his incensement is at this moment so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Hobnob is his word, give it or take it. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know the night of my offense done to him. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do it. Senior Fabian, stay with the gentleman until my return. I shall return. Know you of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. What manner of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to freedom by his form, as you would like to find him in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him, if I can. I am much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my metal. Why, man, he's the very devil. I have never seen such a farrago. I have passed with him once, rapier, scoured and all, and gives me the stuck in to mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet to the ground they walk on. They say he was a fencer to the Sophie. Hawk saw that all not meddle with him. I may not now be pacified. Hey, he can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on it, I thought even valiant and so cunning in fence. All I've seen him damned, dear, all challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, Great Caplet. I'll make a motion. Stand here and make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I have his horse to take up the quarrel, and I have persuaded him that the youth is a devil. She is as horribly conceited of him, and pants look pairs of a bear where as he holds. There is no remedy, sir, who will fight with you for oath's sake. He hath buttered the bottom of this quarrel, but he finds that now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw from the supports of his vow. He will not hurt you. Pray God, defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you seem furious. I assure you, it is against my will. There's no remedy, sir. He will, for oath's sake, have one doubt with you. He cannot by the duello avoid it. He has assured me, as he's a gentleman and a soldier, that he will not hurt you. Great God, he's on to wit. I do assure you, tis against my will. If this young gentleman has done offense, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. Ah! What man? What are you? One, sir, that dares yet to more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Well, if you are an undertaker, I am for you! Necessity makes me ask him for my purse. The grief is more for what I cannot do for you. You must pause myself. You stand amazed. To be a comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat you of some of that money. What money, sir? For the gentleness you have shown here, and for the part being prompted by your present trouble, my having is not much, but hold, here's half my coffers. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest it make me so insane a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses I have done for you. I know not you by voice or any future. Oh, heavens themselves! Home, sir, I pray you go. Let's me speak a little. 
This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with the sanctity of love, and to his image, most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to us? The time goes by. Away! But oh, how vile an idol proves this god! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good for your shame. In virtue, in nature, there is no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtuous beauty, beauteous evil, are empty snares, or flourished by the devil. The man goes mad. Away with him. Come, sir. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. Prove true imagination, or prove true that I, dear brother, be now taken for you. He named Sebastian, whom I know yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was he. So went he still dressed in his color, ornament, and fashion. Oh, if it prove true, tempests are kind, and salt waves fresh in love. Come hither, knight, come hither. Let's throw a couple or two of the most sage sauce. Very dishonest, paltry boy. More of a coward than a heretic. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him? For his cowardship, asked Fabian. Coward, most devout coward, religious in it. I'll after him again and beat him. Do it, come from soundly, but uh, never draw thy sword. And I do not. Come, let's see the event. I don't lay any money, told me nothing yet. Good to thou art a foolish fellow. I am clear thee. Well, how not in faith? No, I do not know you, nor was I not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor is her name not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee vent thy folly somewhere else, and I know it's not me. Then my folly? He has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Then my folly. I am afraid that this great lover of the world will prove a cockney. I pray thee, sir, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent that thou art coming? I pray thee, foolish grief, depart from me. Here's money for thee. If you carry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my trot, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report. After fourteen years' purchase. Now, sir, have I met you again. There's for you. Why, why, there's for thee. There, and there, all people mad. Hold, sir, I'll throw your dagger over the house. This I will tell my lady straight. I will not be in some of your coats for two pence. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria, though I struck him first. Yet it's no matter for that. Let me be clear thee. Hold, sir, you are well flesh. I'll put up your iron, sir. I will be clear thee. Oh, what's that now? Thou darest let me further draw thy sword. What, what? Nay, I must have an ounce of this, and thou will purge blood from you. Still, my sense and leads deep. Bid me thus to dream, still let me sleep. 
Nay, would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. Nay, I think you put on this gown and make him believe that thou art Sir Topis. Do it quickly, I'll call Sir Toby the Wells. Joe, bless thee, Master Parson. Bonus dia, Sir Toby, for as the old hermit of Prague that never saw pen and ink, very wittily said to a niece of King Gorboduc, that that is, is, so I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For what is that but that, and is but is? <laughs> the knave counterfeits well. A good knave. What ho, I say, peace in this prison. Who goes there? Sir Topas, the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio. Sir Topas! The lunatic! Sir Topas, Sir Topas, good Sir Topas, go to my lady. Ow, hyperbolical fiend. How vexest thou this man? Talk as thou of nothing but ladies. Well said, Master Parson. <laughs> Sir Topas, never was man thus wronged. They have kept me here in prison. I am not mad, I tell you, this house is dark. Fie, thou dishonest Satan. I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself with courtesy. Sayest thou that this house is dark? As hell, Sir Thomas. Why, I have bay windows transparent as barricados, and the clear stores toward the south north are as lustrous as ebony. And yet, complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Thomas. This house is dark, I tell you. Madman, thou errest. I say to thee, there are no darkness but in ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. Fare thee well! Sir Topas! Sir Topas! Most exquisite Sir Topas. Man for all waters. Thou mightst have done this without thy gown. He sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and, and tell me how thou findest him. If he can be conveniently delivered, I, I would he were, for at this moment I am in so much offense with my lady that I really cannot safely pursue this sport to the upshot. Hey Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady dies. Fool! My lady is unkind, party. Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say! She loves another. Who calls, huh? Uh, good fool. Uh, as ever that will deserve well in my hand, help me to a candle, ink, pen, and paper. And as a gentleman, I swear I will live to see thee. Be thankful for it. Master Malvolio. I fool. Fool, I am well, as, as well in my wits as you are. But as well, then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. Fool, they have kept me here in this dark house property to me, sent ministers to me, and tried to drive me out of my mind. Advice of what you say, the minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thou wits the heaven restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy van bibble babble. Sir Thomas! Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who? I, sir? Not I, sir. God be with you, good Sir Topas. Mary, amen. I will, sir, I will. Alas, sir, be patient. What fool. say you, sir? I'm shed for speaking to you. Fool, fool, I pray thee, help me to some ink and some light and some paper. I tell you, I'm as sane as any man in Illyria. Well, a day that you were, sir. It's fool, I tell you, I am saying it, it will profit you more than any man in a, uh, in a, in a, that has ever delivered a letter. I will help you to it. But tell me true, are you not mad indeed? Or do you but counterfeit? I am as sane as any man in Illyria. Nay, I'll never believe a madman until I can see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and... Thank you, fool. Thank you. I pray thee be gone. This is the air, that is the glorious sun. As pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that wraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant. 
Yet there he was, and there I found this credit, that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense, that this may be some error, but no madness. Yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes, and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad, or else the lady's mad. Yet if were so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and get back affairs in their dispatch, with such smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. There, before him, and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of thy faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it, whilst you are willing it shall come to know, what time we will our celebration keep according to my birth. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly know this act of mine. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. That is to give a dog and then in recompense desire my dog again. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends? Hi, sir. We are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes, and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. Uh, no, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so that by my foes I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that conclusion is to be as kisses, if your four negatives make two affirmatives, why then, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Why, this is excellent. I may trust, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be the worse for it. Here's... Here's gold. If you will go to your lady and tell her I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Marry, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you think that my desire of having is a sin of covetousness. But, as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will awake it anon. There comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix in a frock from Candy. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private bribery would we apprehend him. He did me service, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief! What foolish fullness has brought thee to their mercies, whose, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hath made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, be pleased to shake off these names that you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though, I confess, I'm base and grand enough for Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft man, that most ungrateful boy there by his side, from the rude seas enraged in foaming mouth that I redeem. A wreck past hope he was, his life I gave him, and did thereto add my love, without retention or restraint. All his in dedication did I expose myself, pure for his love into the dangers of this distressed town. Drew to defend him when he was beset, were being apprehended his false cunning, not being to partake with me in danger. Taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, and grew a twenty years removed thing, while well, wound wink. Denied mine own purse! How can this be? When came he to this town? To Damor, and for three months prior. No interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night we did keep company. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me. But more of that anon. Take him aside. Lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable. 
Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be apt to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ears as howling after music. Still so cruel? Still so constant, lord. What, to perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and inauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest devotions that e'er devotion tendered hath breathed out. What shall I do? Even what it so please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it, like the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love, a savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobility. But hear me this. Since you to no regardance cast my vows, and I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom I swear by heaven I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, away with me. My thoughts are ripe with mischief. I'll sacrifice a lamb I love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I most jog and apt and willingly to do rest a thousand deaths would die. So where goes Cesario? After him I love more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love a wife. I am detested. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Has it been so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come, away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? Aye, husband, can he that deny? Her husband, Sirrah! No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Oh, welcome, father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold. Though lately we intended to keep in darkness what occasion now reveals before tis ripe, what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. On a contract of the eternal bond of love, confirmed by the mutual joinder of your hands, uh, strengthened by the interchangement of your rings, and all the ceremonies of this compact, I did myself seal by my testimony. When, since not two hours have passed since I grow closer to my grave? O oh, thou dissembling cock, what wilt thou be when time hath so to grizzle upon thy case? Or else will thy case so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, you take them, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. With little faith, though thou hast too much fear. With the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. For the love of God, your help. I had rather than forty pound I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, Lord Cesario. We took him for a very fool, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? Oh, light place, there he is. You broke my head across for nothing, and that I did I was sent unto do by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespeak you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you set nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Here comes Sir Toby halting, you shall hear more. But if he had not been in drinking, he would tickled you other gates than he did. How is it with oh, you, gentlemen? Oh, it's all one! That's hurt me! And that's the end on it! Sot! Sot, didst thou see Dick Surgeon Sot? Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, now we're gone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. He's a drunken rogue, and pass he measures panion. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him! Who hath made this quarrel with oh, them? I'll hope you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. You will? Oh, an ass head and a coxcomb and a name, a thin face, name, a gulp! Get to bed and let this hurt be looked to. I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. 
had I been the brother of my blood, I would have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a stranger guard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended thee. Pardon me, sweet one, even for those vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, oh, oh my dear Antonio, how are the arts of wrath and fortune used inside philosophy? Bastion, are you? Do you ever that, Antonio? How is this possible? How do you make division of yourself? An apple left in two is no more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I've never had a brother, nor can there be that deity my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister, which supply and waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countrymen? What name? What parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too. If so went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to haunt us. Here I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad from which the rumor did participate. Were you a woman, as is the rest goes even, I should my tears that fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome, Drangiola. If this be all that keeps us from being happy, but this my masculine usurp to tire, do not embrace me until each circumstance of place, time, and fortune do go here and jump that I am Viola, which to confirm a captain in the town has my maiden's garments. All my occurrence since hath been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook. My nature to her bias drew in that you would have been contracted to a maid, nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrayed both to a maid and a man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this is so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy breath. Boy, thou hast said a thousand times thou never shouldst love a woman like to me. And all those swearings will I overswear and make as true as the continent of fire. Give me your hand and let me see thee in thy woman's weds. The captain that doth bring me to shore hath my maiden's garments. He is at attendance at Malvolio's suit. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither. And yet, alas, now I remember me, they say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. A most distracting fre frenzy of mine own from my remembrance clearly banishes. How does he throw? Truly, madam, he'll be as well at the stave's end, as, as well as any man in his case may do. Has he written a letter to you? I should have given it to you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used novel. Did he write this? I, madam. See him delivered, Fabian, bring him hither. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it, so please you, here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so far beneath the metal of your sex, so oh, much against your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. From this time you shall be your master's mistress. Sister, you are she. Is this the madman? That he is. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Not by Notorious wrong. No. Indeed you have. Pray you, peruse that letter. You will not now deny that it is in your hand. And tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you gave me such clear light of favor, made me come smiling and cross-guarded, 
and to wear the yellow stockings, and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people, and acting this in the obedient hope, why you have suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by a priest, be the greatest kick and goal that I ever invention played upon. Tell me why! Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess, much like the character, but out of question, tis Maria's hands. And, now I do bethink me, it was she first told me thou wast mad, then camest in smiling, and in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in this letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon me, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawl to come taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. Most truly, I confess, myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous grounds we had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. With, with, that with a sportful balance it was followed, they rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one in this interlude, sir. One sir hope ass, sir, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I'm not mad. But do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not, he's gagged. And thus, the whirling of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you! He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him, and entreat him to peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known, and golden time convince, a solemn combination of our dear souls shall be made. Meantime, sweet sister, we shall not part from hence. Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. <laughs> 